<laughs> it's kind of where where the industry is going, anyways. As you know, in the in the sense of like, record companies are slowly but surely becoming obsolete, mm -hmm. and you know nobody buys records anymore. It's all downloads. It's all the internet now. It's it's this is what the industry has become, and now the artists are able to kind of be their 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 own record company. Mm -hmm. They can make their own decisions. They don't have a dicta like a dictatorship or a or, or a a corporation right. telling them this is this is how I want you to dress. Mm -hmm. This is the song that I want you to sing. Now it's us picking and doing what we really want to do. And now from this point on, we can start a whole new chapter in our lives as far as artists, as far as a band mm -hmm. with our next record. It's all going to be coming straight from us. So many things that are important to mention, and because you've grown up in public with your fans watching you and cheering you on, we've also gotten to know you guys. I mean, I met family members, and I've seen some of the ups and downs. And, you know, when I read the story about Lou Pearlman, who was your manager, and I met him on numerous occasions, I mean, that, you know, that's a pretty scary story. He's in prison for, you know, over 25 years. He robbed the Backstreet Boys along with a lot of other people that he did business with. I'm just wondering. You know, did you speak to him since he was arrested? I mean, what was the, that last conversation with Lou Pearlman like between the Backstreet Boys and him? I had actually seen him. I don't know, maybe how he had seen him, like, probably two. Uh, mm -hmm. It was, like, maybe, like, two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And even at that time, it was sort of like, you know, in, it was like in denial. You know what I mean? It really didn't... You don't want to believe that someone can do that to you, mm -hmm. or has has the the ability to do, do that to anybody. Uh, hundreds of people that he yeah. you know that he had, but um, it, but he was he was good at what he did was and that was conning. Mm -hmm. He was really good at it, and um, and we we were naive in in a sense. You know, we all we wanted was a shot. You know, all we wanted was to. To get to the top and to and to have fun doing it and mm -hmm. and put trust in people and um, but we we learn along the way um, that there are certain there are characters that out there there are people who who have masks on and um, I think we are more aware of what those masks and characters are you know but it's unfortunate that you have to go through them you know in order to to realize who they are. And even Brian, like when you think about what Brian, Brian was one of the ambassadors for, he just really believed that he was a, a, a truly bad person and, mm -hmm. and we believed him, we went through with it, but it was, it was still kind of hard. You know, mm -hmm. it was definitely hard to, to accept it. Because right. you don't want to really no. accept it. Because in, in a way he was sort of like a father Figure, and he gave you that initial break, so there's a, yeah, so, so you're, you know, you're sucking in while he did help us, but. But I always look at it like this. I look at, I, I say that, you know, it eventually will come out in the wash who, who you are as a person, you know. Think you, you will, it'll just happen, and it might take a little time. You know, I'm sure there's slogans and sayings that, that go along yeah. with it that I can't think of right now, but unfortunately, you know, you know, it, it, it's proof, you know, to what he was and what happened. But, Brian, it's interesting because, you know, Nick was just mentioning you and how you felt about this whole thing and the total betrayal that you have, in this, you know, a spiritual evolution that started, you know, a long time ago, and I know that's so important to you, especially with, you know, what you've gone through with your son's illness and the whole thing. I'm just wondering, is forgiveness overrated or is it really necessary in order to move on? What do you think? Uh... Forgiveness is definitely not overrated. No. Um, you know, but it takes a, a big person to forgive somebody. Um, and I honestly have forgiven Lou. Um, the thing that hurts me the most still, that eats me inside, is that I begged him in his office, you know, countless amounts of times to, to right the wrong. Right. And I knew that we were going to have a fight, and I knew it was going to come down to money and to power and to things that we didn't have. Mm -hmm. And that was the sad thing was the whole setup. But, you know, Nick is right. I mean, we, we wouldn't be the people that we are today, the, the human beings, the men, the grown men that we are because of, you know, the good and the bad. And, you know, I don't think we would change anything. I mean, there's, there's not a person here that would change a daggone thing that we've been through in order to be sitting right here with you still, you know, talking about life and good times and still making music. So 
Except maybe that settlement. Uh, except the settlement, honey. <laughs> there's the that. that coming out. <laughs> I did go on record saying that I wouldn't have paid him the money. But. You wouldn't have, that's right. But it's funny because you've all developed different roles. And I got to laugh because Howie, I bumped into you a couple of times. And we were talking about the fact that, you you know, you all have different interests as well. And you're doing different things at the same time as you're doing the Backstreet Boys. And business is like a big thing. Mini Trump is over there looking into real estate, looking into managing other bands. I mean, those are really important things to you where are you at with that particular dream now I mean that's one thing I was saying earlier about each of us within this group here you know we all have so many different talents that you know a lot of people don't even know of and you know a lot of things that we're actually working on besides you know solo records um, outside ventures and projects I mean for me personally I've I've always you know I've wanted to help other artists and that's why I've yeah. kind of you know initially helped my sister Pollyanna many years ago who sang and, at your um, wedding right exactly she yes. did and, um, you know, I think for us, all of us here, we feel like, you know, we've been blessed so much in the early days. So many people have helped us out. So whether it's through charity, mm -hmm. whether it's through, you know, helping out other artists, writing, producing, you know, help funding projects, you know, each of us have those kind of aspirations to try to do that, you know. And for me, real estate was another, you know, I was lucky enough that I had an older brother that, you know, kind of guided me and got me into investing into that thing. But, you know, we're all still learning every day. You know, this, you know, even learning about this business, this business has changed so much that we're like, we're having to invest into our own project now, mm -hmm. even with this new record that we're about to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're having, we're all stepping to the plate and all of a sudden becoming businessmen and, you know, handling our business, not only with making records, but going on tour and, you know, setting up the production and going through all that. A lot that, of work, you know? eh? Après cette courte pause avec notre spécial sur The Backstreet Boys, nous allons rencontrer qui? Les fans fidèles. Ne bougez pas. Check party. We're excited for the show tonight. What we like to do is check our microphones with our sound guys and our DJ. Please get up for DJ Lonnie Acadia. Arcadia in the house. How long have you been a fan? Four years or five? Four years or five. Yeah. Who's your favorite? Nick. Oh, Nick. Yes, Nick. 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 Nick.